Hi, I'm going to show the principle behind uh, GPIO interrupts and to do this I'm going to be using the Microtasker project in its simulator and I'll be doing this on a KL27 device which is pretty much the same as a KL17 device. So I first of all make sure that I have a suitable part. Here I have the Freedom KL27 board. I build the project and uh, let it run. Now I've already set a breakpoint here in the IRQ initialization function. Uh, this is the code which is uh, responsible. What we're doing is we're saying that we want a user callback function, which is called test RQ4. Uh, we want it to be on port D bit zero. We want a pull-up enabled on this pin and we want it to interrupt whenever there's a falling edge. So now we can take a look at uh, what this routine does. Now the first interesting thing that we're going to see is that it's going to enter the handling callback, which is this one here, into the port D area. And uh, the next thing that it does is it configures the interrupt itself in the NVIC. Now, beware the KL17, the KL27, um, they tend to have shared port interrupts. That means we only have one interrupt handler for ports B, C, D and E, which means that all of these have to be handled using the same uh, low-level interrupt routine. So I'm not going to go into this routine, but I'm going to show here the Cortex uh, registers. Now I know that we're going to be enabling an interrupt bit in this register. So I'm just going to let it step over this function and we can see that it, it did enable the most significant bit in this register. So that's a simple way to check that the interrupt has been correctly enabled in the NVIC itself. Now continuing, we see that the most important work which is done is in fact enabling the port interrupt in the port register. Now this is the port PCR0 register, which in the, in the D port, which is responsible for the first pin. So I'm just going to let this uh, do its work so we can see what it does. Now here we see that it has enabled pull-ups. The three bit, the three at the end here means that uh, a pull-up is enabled. We have a zero one here. That's a multiplexing function, which is GPIO function. And the A here decodes to meaning that we have a falling edge interrupt enabled on this port bit. So I'm going to let the simulation continue operating. Here we see the Freedom K27 board operating and also I'm going to show a terminal emulator. Now this is also connected up to the simulation using a virtual port to its UART. You can see here the UART in operation. And this is the port which we're interested in, port D bit 0, which is presently at a high level. It's not showing a P because it's not programmed as a peripheral function, it's programmed as an input. So if I now click on it, I can simulate a falling edge. Now the falling edge arrives in this general port B, C, D, E interrupt handler. This is the lowest level of interrupt handling where we first have to check to see whether we have uh, interrupts on port B, C, D or E or possibly on multiple ones at the same time. So if I look at the port registers below here, we will see in fact that the fact of generating an interrupt on bit 1 set this interrupt flag which is going to be checked now by the handling code. We can see we, we had no interrupts waiting on port B, we have none waiting on port C, but we do have one waiting on port D. And uh, the interrupt handler then recognizes that it's the first bit. And then if I let it continue, we hit our user interrupt callback function. And if we do a few interrupts, we find that ultimately 
Each time we get a falling edge interrupt on port D0, the application displays a corresponding debug message on the terminal output.